This is Valley View News, and here are today's headlines. Thousands of people show up in Hollywood in protest for the Me Too March. The CSUN men's basketball team kicks off their season. The San Fernando Valley is looking for ways to help the homeless epidemic. Hello, and welcome to Valley View News. I'm Amber Partita. And I'm Daniel Martindale. Hello. More than 400 people were killed and nearly 7,000 were injured after 7.3 earthquake struck the Iran-Iraq border last Sunday. It was centered just outside the eastern Iraqi city of Halabja. The most destruction was in the Iranian town of Sarpoli Zahab. Several apartment complexes collapsed. Water, power and phone service were cut to the area. The city's hospital was also heavily damaged. Many victims were treated in makeshift field hospitals. A dam holding back the Dayala River was also damaged. Iran's government sent in military aid to victims. Iran is located on several major fault lines and is prone to major earthquakes. On the same day, another quake hit Costa Rica. The U.S. Geological Survey says a 6.5 magnitude quake hit the coast near the city of Jaco. One building there was evacuated. Costa Rican President Luis Guillermo Solis activated the nation's emergency response agencies. Officials say three people died of heart attacks during the quake. President Solis tweeted that no tsunami warning was issued. President Trump nominated a former pharmaceutical executive to head the Health and Human Services Department. Trump used Twitter to say he wants Alex Azar to replace Tom Price at HHS. Azar used to work in the HHS legal department during the George W. Bush administration. Last month, three Democratic congressmen accused Azar of delaying legislation meant to improve drug pricing transparency. Some Senate Democrats say Azar's confirmation hearings won't be easy. Parents protested at Palos Verdes High School last Monday after a student charged with murder was let back on campus. The student, Cameron Terrell, and two other suspects were arrested for the murder of 21-year-old Justin Holmes in South L.A. Officials say Holmes was walking home with two friends when he was confronted by the suspects on October 1st. The group allegedly asked Holmes where he was from before firing gunshots and fleeing the scene. Police say Terrell drove the getaway car and didn't fire the fatal shot, but he's still being charged with murder for his role in the crime. He was released on bail on October 16th. LAPD says gang affiliation charges are being filed against all three defendants. They'll appear in court on November 27th. Closing statements began in the murder case of an eight-year-old Palmdale boy. Gabriel Fernandez was tortured and allegedly murdered by his mother's boyfriend, Isauro Aguirre. Aguirre allegedly tortured the boy to death because he thought the boy was gay. The child suffered from burns, a fractured skull, and broken ribs. Cat litter was also found in his stomach. Aguirre's charges include the infliction of torture. The boy's mother, Pearl Hernandez, is also charged with murder. His lawyer says Aguirre doesn't deserve the death penalty. A California abortion law will appear before the Supreme Court soon. The Reproductive Fact Act is being challenged by anti-abortion groups. The Supreme Court will decide if the law violates the First Amendment. The law's opponents say forcing anti-abortion clinics to give patients information on the procedure is unconstitutional. This will be the first time in the Trump administration that an abortion-related case will be heard by the Supreme Court. Jay Sekulo, who is also one of President Trump's personal lawyers, will be challenging the law before the court. The Reproductive Fact Act was approved by Congress in 2015. The Ninth Circuit U.S. Court of Appeals upheld it last year. Los Angeles is experiencing an increase in police pursuits. A grand jury investigation shows there were more than 600 chases this year. Last year, there were around 500. Lucas Aragon's sister was killed during a police pursuit, even though she wasn't part of the chase. He now runs a website called PursuitSafety.org. Aragon and the LAPD work together on ways to keep the public safe during pursuits. The amount of non-criminal, undocumented immigrant arrests sharply increased since President Trump took office. An ICE spokesperson says more than 97,000 immigrants were arrested by ICE agents this year as of September. About 29 percent of those were non-criminals. 30,000 more immigrants were arrested compared to Obama's final year in office. During his campaign, Trump promised the removal of all dangerous undocumented immigrants from the country. But now more immigrants of all kinds are being targeted. Regardless of their criminal standing, critics say, the Obama administration prioritized certain categories of immigrants more than others for arrests. The new guidelines say that ICE won't exempt any categories from immigration enforcement. 
Immigrants now have to wait longer to become a U.S. citizen. Since the 2016 presidential election, citizenship applications doubled. There are now 700,000 applications waiting. Legal service providers say many lawful permanent residents fear they're no longer safe, so they're applying for citizenship. Government officials say they're trying to fix the backlogged applications. And now we have Malcolm Finney here with Social Media News Sports Center on Snapchat. Tell us more, Malcolm. Now you can send selfies and check your favorite sports. Snapchat keeps raising the bar. The app will now have its own sports show. ESPN says Snapchat will have their own version of Sports Center. The two companies will be using the new show to gain more millennial viewers. New episodes will air at 5 a.m. and 5 p.m. on weekdays and 5 a.m. on weekends. The segments will be about three to five minutes long. This comes after sources say ESPN plans to lay off 100 staffers after Thanksgiving. Lyft is expanding its international services. It's entering the Toronto, Canada market. The company already operates through partnerships with other ride-sharing companies in Southeast Asia and China. Lyft CEO Logan Green says they've had their sights set on international expansion for some time. Lyft is trailing behind competitor Uber and expanding abroad. However, Uber is facing challenges in other countries. London pulled Uber's operating license, and Quebec wants commercial drivers to complete at least 35 hours of training before driving for a service. Lyft says they will begin operating in Toronto next month. The fight against Alzheimer's takes a swing in the right direction. Bill Gates has donated $50 million to the Dementia Discovery Fund. Statistics show that more than 5 million Americans have Alzheimer's, and the number is rising. Gates says the donation has a little bit of a personal aspect. Yes, my family... Uh including several of the men in my family have had uh, this disease and so you know I'm seeing uh, how tough it is. He said watching loved ones struggle with a disease that robs them of their mind is hard. Gates believes effective treatment for Alzheimer's is a decade away. There's a social media war brewing over the Keurig brand. The bashing comes because Keurig pulled their advertising from the Sean Hannity show. Hannity recently interviewed Alabama Senate candidate Roy Moore. Moore is accused of participating in sexual activities with a 14-year-old girl. A leader of a liberal advocacy group tweeted that Hannity was defending Moore and reprimanded the women who came forward along with revealing a list of Hannity's sponsors. Keurig was one of the many sponsors who replied to the tweet stating they were dropping the advertisement. People who support Keurig's decisions started hashtag buy Keurig for Christmas. Fans of Hannity opposed with hashtags boycott Keurig and Keurig smash challenge. That's all I have for today for social media. Back to you guys. Thanks, Malcolm. When we come back, a former vice president may be running for president in 2020. And allegations on Alabama Republican Senate nominee Roy Moore after the break. I'm a single mother and I was the main one working, so I never thought that I could go back to school, you know. <laughs> my sister, my mother, everybody wanted to help me with my kids. I could not have gone my diploma without my family. Find free adult education classes near you at finishyourdiploma.org. Do you know what to do? Yes. Bring it back to me. Then I'll give you your money. Frank Thomas, you are under arrest for the theft of trade secrets. Come with me. Bye-bye, Frank. Theft of trade secrets is illegal. Open road, here comes the Hefley family. Whether it's a short trip or a long haul. Estimated time, 47 hours. They will beg. You're hungry? I'm happy to provide. They will plead. Deep fried, fried butter, butter on a stick. stick. But whatever you do, don't wimp out. Now you're talking. Make them buckle up. He can't hurt. Remember, safety first. Cheese curls. Ah! Second. Are you orange? Eva Marie smoked 12,000 packs of cigarettes over 15 years. She quit. And now there's a new lung cancer screening that could save her life. You stopped smoking, now start screening. No matter how much you smoked, early detection could save you. Talk to your doctor or learn more at savedbythescan.org. 
They call me prince like I'm royalty or something. But the places I've lived ain't no palaces. So I don't need grilled salmon or a new scratching post. Just give me a cardboard box and a can of tuna and we're good. You can even change my name. I'm cool being the kitty formerly known as Prince. Trump versus Biden in 2020? It could happen. Former Vice President Joe Biden went on NBC's morning shows last Monday. He says he doesn't rule out running for the Democratic presidential nomination, but Biden says he'll make his final decision when the time comes. If the Lord Almighty came down, sat in the middle of the table and said, Joe, the nomination is yours, but you have to take it now, I would say no. He says he hasn't made up his mind yet, but regrets not running in the previous election. Biden has been openly critical of Hillary Clinton's campaign and says he thinks he could have won if he ran. Biden will be 77 years old in 2020. For the first time in a decade, three United States Navy aircraft carriers sailed together. The USS Ronald Reagan, Theodore Roosevelt, and Nimitz practiced drills for four days along the western Pacific Ocean. These aircraft carriers are meant to intimidate North Korea. Japanese and South Korean military vessels joined in some of the exercises as well. The commander of the U.S. Pacific Fleet says this is a strong testament to the fleet's ability, as well as the commitment to the security and stability of the region. More Republicans are urging Roy Moore to drop out of the Alabama Senate race. The Washington Post reports 30 people claim that Moore dated teenage girls while he was in his 30s. Five women have accused the Alabama Republican of sexual misconduct. They include Lee Korfman, who says Moore tried to engage in a sexual relationship with her when she was 14 years old, and Beverly Young Nelson, who says Moore sexually assaulted her when she was 16. This has nothing whatsoever to do with the Republicans or the Democrats. It has everything to do with Mr. Moore's sexual assault when I was a teenager. Moore denies the allegations and says he will sue the Post. This article is a prime example of fake news, an attempt to divert attention from the true issues which affect our country. Mitch McConnell says he believes the women and that Moore should step down. McConnell is also pushing for a writing candidate to run in the election on December 12th. Meanwhile, the National Republican Senatorial Committee dropped its fundraising efforts for Moore. The committee chairman says the Senate should vote to expel him if he wins the race. Alyssa Hoekstra joins us now with entertainment. What's going on today, Alyssa? Thanks, Daniel. A wave of sexual assault allegations sparked more than just a popular social media hashtag. Valley View reporter Star Harvey has more. Thousands of people marched and protested in the streets of Hollywood to support victims of sexual assault and harassment. Sexual violence has got to go. I wanted to make a statement. I wanted to take it off the you know, the internet and put it out in public so that people could see, like, we're, you know, we're, we're done. We've had enough. We don't want this happening anymore. We want to change attitudes, and we also want to find solutions. <laughs> The demonstration comes just weeks after a string of men and women who say that they were assaulted decided to speak out. This is enough. It's 2017. We're not going to put up with it anymore. We're not going to be quiet about it anymore. Um, things are going to change. And this is a show of support for those who want change. The organizer's goal was to create a safe space for victims to speak out after years of silence. This is a different moment. This is an inflection point, uh, I think, in this battle to end sexual harassment in the workplace. Never before have we seen such severe and swift consequences uh, be attached to men who've been accused of sexual assault. Survivors and supporters came forward today through the Me Too campaign and said that they are ready to take action. Now that we are joining forces and coming all together, the survivors, they feel strong and they feel okay. National statistics on rape and other abuses are reported by many groups, including the organization RAIN. Someone is assaulted in this country every 98 seconds, and one in six women have faced rape. Supporters of the hashtag MeToo campaign say that today, it's time to take a stand. I'm Star Harvey in Hollywood for Valley View News. Actress Elizabeth Perkins held a sign with the name of actor James Woods at a sexual misconduct protest last Sunday in Hollywood. The protest was a part of the Take Back the Workplace March, organized by comedian Tess Rafferty. 
During the march, Perkins walked with a sign that read, James Woods, hashtag me too. Perkins isn't the only star to come forward this week. Gold medal gymnast Allie Raceman says she was sexually assaulted by USA team doctor Larry Nasser. Nasser pleaded guilty to child pornography charges in July and faces 22 to 27 years in prison. DC Comics also fired longtime editor Eddie Braganza after a report saying he sexually harassed female colleagues for years. Bijou Phillips issued an apology to Mean Girl star Daniel Franzesi after the actor took to Facebook discussing harassment that he says happened on the set of the 2001 film Bully. Franzesi also claims Phillips body shamed him, ridiculed him about his sexuality, and physically assaulted him. He says he was inspired to speak up after actress Ellen Page came forward with her complaint. Page accused X-Men The Last Stand director Brett Ratner of homophobic and abusive behavior. Former 49ers quarterback Colin Kaepernick was named GQ Magazine Citizen of the Year. Ironically, the covered story is titled, Colin Will Not Be Silenced, but Kaepernick declined to be quoted directly for the article. Instead, the story consists of perspectives from people the magazine calls his closest friends. They include rapper J. Cole, former teammate Eric Reed, and others. Kaepernick tweeted last Monday that he was honored to be recognized by GQ. The magazine says Kaepernick agreed to contribute to the issue because he wants to reclaim the narrative of his protest. Kaepernick remains unsigned since opting out of his 49ers contract in March. Last month, he filed a grievance saying some NFL owners conspired against him. The GQ article says that his identity switched from athlete to activist as Kaepernick became wise to the power of silence. Famous gossip columnist Liz Smith died last Sunday at her Manhattan home. She was 94. Smith began her column titled Liz Smith at New York Daily News in 1976. I think when you start saying, this is my rule, you know, something might happen. Actor Rob Lowe tweeted, loved Liz Smith, smart and funny, gossip from the high road. Former co-worker Al Roker said he was fortunate enough to work with Smith and she's nothing short of fabulous. That's all I have for entertainment today. Back to you. Thank you, Alyssa. Our Valley View reporter Melanie Rosales visited a homeless encampment in the spring as part of Valley View News' ongoing effort to keep an eye on the homeless situation in L.A. If you're ever driving into the 405 freeway on Nardoff Street, you might pass by what looks like trash, but others call home. Uh, in this particular spot, we've been here about a month. Uh, there's only about 12 of us all together. And it's a small, small little community, but it works for us. About 45,000 people are homeless in L.A. County, according to the Los Angeles Homeless Service Authority. However, in the valley alone, there are over 7,000. All of us who live here are experiencing the rising cost of living and rising rent and you know, wages are stagnant and it's just kind of creating this perfect storm of homelessness. The police department has received several requests by residents to clear out tents and shacks that have been built on streets. Todd Ickes has been homeless for about a month. He now stays in what used to be a cluttered street in Van Nuys. Filth everywhere, garbage feces, it was just bad, yeah. So I don't blame them, the community's not gonna put up with that. Nonprofit organizations are creating a facility where not only homeless people can rest their hats, but to eventually find a permanent home. LA Family Housing is currently under construction and will be open by the end of this year. It also has a health clinic, 50 units of permanent supportive housing, which is a specific type of housing intended to end homelessness. LA Family Housing is expected to be the largest homeless shelter in the San Fernando Valley. I'm Melanie Rosales in North Hollywood for Valley V News. After the break, more on the mall stabbing. And President Trump's appeals to China's leader on behalf of UCLA's athletes. We'll be right back. Hey there, Mrs. Carter. You can earn over 10% on your money if you deposit your savings into you our investment program. You are our lucky sweepstakes winner. Mrs. Carter, Just enter your Grandma, contact information, information and your winnings will Grandma, be Grandma, it's me. Please help me. I'm stuck in Ohio and my wallet was stolen. Please send me some money so I can get home. Millions of people, especially seniors, are targeted every day by an array of fraudulent scams through online technology. Please be aware. Most of my family, they never graduated high school or even let alone go to college, so I'm trying to break that barrier. Every day after work, went straight to school, studied hard, and, and it paid off. I could not have done it alone. 
I see the future is really bright for me. The high school diploma is just added to the confidence, and now I feel unstoppable. Find free adult education classes near you at finishyourdiploma.org. It's a beautiful day out here. Sunny today with light breezes, giving way to clouds in the afternoon. We could see some light precipitation to moderate precipitation later on, followed by powerful storm-like conditions. 70 miles per hour winds are expected. Authorities are asking everyone, stay indoors. Come on, that's it, let's go. Got a quarter? Well, it turns out President Trump personally sought the help of Chinese President Xi Jinping to resolve the case of the three UCLA basketball players accused of shoplifting. The White House says Trump spoke about the players with the Chinese leader during his two-day stay in Beijing last week. He arrived in China one day after the trio was accused of shoplifting at three high-end stores. The Bruins arrived home last Sunday night without Leangelo Ball, Cody Riley, and Jalen Hill. The three are still under house arrest in China. Inside sources told ESPN that the players could remain there for another two weeks as the investigation continues. Some of the evidence in the case shows the trio shoplifting sunglasses from a Louis Vuitton store. The team was in China for their season opener against Georgia Tech last Friday night. UCLA won 63-60 without those three players. Now to the latest in sports with Chris Escobar. Chris, the Rams are doing surprisingly well considering how poorly they did last year. I'm telling you, Amber, this may be the year for the Rams. they got great potential and great intensity. Let me tell you more about that game. Well, the Rams were able to run over the Texans and add another W to their record. Let's get it started. Rams leading the Texans by three. Here's Jared Goff with the play action, then throws a short one to Todd Gurley. Gurley trying to find an open space. Will he go all the way? No, he will get tripped up around the 30-yard line. Next up, Texans take the field. Tom Savage throws a dart to Bruce Ellington for a 26-yard touchdown. Texas now leading the Rams 7-6. Here is Goff again with the play action. He would throw this one deep to Robert Woods. That will be a 94-yard touchdown to put the Rams on top. Woods gets his fourth touchdown of the season. Rams again taking the field. Goff throws a short one to Sammy Watkins. Speedy looking for blockers, then finds his way in the end zone. Rams up 23-7. Rams once again on the field. Goff with a deep step back. He throws a screen pass to Woods. He will run 12 yards for the last touchdown of the game. Rams placing the dagger 33-7. They are now 7-2 and, and still remain first place in the NFC West. Now to baseball. The Dodgers may land another Japanese player. Pitcher Shohei Altani may get to play in the major league soon. The MLB and Nippon Professional Baseball League are negotiating details of a deal. The Dodgers and a few other clubs are trying to add the two-way start in their roster. A general manager meeting takes place next month in Orlando to discuss trades and free agents. Now on to Jacksonville where the Chargers are seeking to boost their way up to first place in their division. Here is Brad Norton ready to punt this one away. But wait, the Jacks fooled the Chargers with a fake punt. Corey Grant dodging and hurtling to find his way in the end zone. Jaguar starting the game with a 7-0 lead. Chargers on the field, Phillip Rivers take the snap and throws one to Austin Eckler. He will run 22 yards for a touchdown. 
Chargers leading 14-7. Next up, Jackson on the field. Blake Bortles rolls to the right. He throws a six-yard pass to Marcellus Lewis. Jackson adds two more points to tie the game at 14. Now, Chargers back on the field. Rivers hands this one off to Eckler, but he will fumble. Jags recover the ball, but unfortunately will get the touchdown. Instead, they tie the game at 17 to go into overtime. Now we go into overtime. Rivers pedaling back, then throws one deep to Travis Benjamin. But Benjamin gets ripped away by OJ Boye. That will be the second Chargers turnover of the game. Jags now with a chance. They will go for a field goal. Here is Josh Lambeau with a 30 yard kick. Nearly blocked, but goes to the uprights. Jaguars taking the win 20 to 17. The Chargers get their sixth loss of the season as they are third place in the AFC West. The season men's basketball kicked off their season last week. Valley View reported Shelby Charlene has more. Last Friday night, people lined up to see the CSUN men's basketball team take on the Life Pacific Warriors in their 60th season opener. The Matadors come into the season with six true freshmen after going 11-19 last year and finishing sixth in the Big West Conference. Freshman guard Terrell Gomez had 15 points, five assists, and two rebounds in his first game. I thought Gomez did a great job uh, running the team, uh, hits, the sh hits the shots, comes and plays pick and roll. He's, you know, he's got such a huge heart, and he has built-in leadership qualities. You know, there's just not a doubt that he is a, an individual that will, will always be a leader. <laughs> Senior Tavrion Dawson put up 14 points, had four rebounds, and four assists in the 76-50 win over Life Pacific. But he wasn't too happy with the team's defense. We confused uh, pick and roll schemes a little bit and uh, gave up middle too much. We scrambled pretty well and the help side was uh, pretty good. Just can't get confused on pick and roll. The Matadors still managed to grab 50 rebounds, and the team's offense was on point, shooting 45% from behind the arc. We shot 23s tonight, which is not really the way we normally play, but I couldn't really say anything about how many threes we took because we made nine of them. The CSUN men's basketball team takes home their first W of the season, despite facing Life Pacific, who went 20-9 and nine last year. Next, the Matadors will travel to Mexico for the Cancun Challenge. In Northridge, I'm Shelby Charlene, Valley View News. Well, that's all the sports I have for today. Back to you guys. Thanks, Chris. What a remarkable turnaround the Rams have had this year. A stabbing that left two men injured at the Mall of America earlier this week is being called an isolated incident. Officials of the Minneapolis Mall say the attack was a result of a robbery gone wrong. It occurred inside of a Macy's dressing room. The 20-year-old suspect was confronted while trying to rob a customer. Police say he then stabbed the victim and another man as well. The suspect was then disarmed by others in the store. The two victims were treated at a hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. Women are less likely to receive CPR from a bystander. About 90% of cardiac arrest cases die, but CPR can double or triple the chances of survival. A study shows that only 39% of women receive CPR when suffering a cardiac arrest in public, compared to the 45% of men who are given CPR. Researchers and rescuers think it is because of the look of it, like moving women's clothes to get better access and touching women's breasts. Well, people can now have breakfast at Tiffany's. Not the actual jewelry store like Audrey Hepburn, but at their flagship store in New York City. The Blue Box Cafe had their grand opening last Friday. The cafe is located on the fourth floor. Their signature breakfast is named after the movie Breakfast at Tiffany's. It's priced at $29 and includes coffee and a croissant. Tiffany and company, like other retailers, have been focusing on improving the shopping experience for their customers. Mm. Just like the movie. Too bad it's too far away. Thank you for watching Valley View News. I'm Amber Partita. And I'm Daniel Martindale. We'll see you right back here next week.